Welcome to the cemetery. I'm former grave digger Nathan Barnett from Spooky Old New England, and you're watching Grave Stories. Hope you can understand that one. Welcome back, everyone. We're here for another one. This one is creepy. Now, before we get into it, please, please, I'm begging you to click the bell. If you do, you'll get notified. Guaranteed, every time I load these, please be notified. Please watch them. My life depends on it. I'm almost at 500,000 subscribers. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, let's begin. Okay, now before I begin this one, I need to say that I've seen a lot of videos covering this girl's case in articles, news stories, this girl was on Dateline when it happened. This is a story of a missing girl who went missing in the woods and it's been covered a ton. But in all of the research I've done, I didn't see anyone talk about the things that I discovered, which I feel bring this whole thing to a crazy new level. And I'm not someone who expects to be able to find like these gold mines and breakthroughs, but I couldn't believe what I found that wasn't in any other video. There were links to this stuff on Reddit that some people talked about, but no one was talking about it publicly in their coverage. And I thought this is insane. So please watch to the end of this one because it's like two stories in one. It's unbelievable. Okay, here we go. Haley Zega was a six-year-old girl who went walking in the woods with her grandparents, Jay and Joyce Hale. This was in 2001, 21 years ago. It was Sunday, April 29th, and they were walking on the trails of the Ozark National Forest in Arkansas. People walk in this area all the time. It's very scenic. There's places people go to. There's Whitaker Point and Hawksbill Crag. Whitaker Point is this big rock that like sticks out off a cliff and you stand out there on the edge looking over the valley and it's a great photo op. So Haley is walking with her grandparents down this trail and she's not in a great mood. She's six, it's hot, and she just doesn't want to be out there. On top of it, they see this waterfall where they're standing. The waterfall is like at their feet, they're on the top of it. And if you were to climb down a tree, you could go down like the 10 to 12 feet and see this waterfall falling. Haley's grandfather went down to see it. He climbed down the tree by himself, looked at it and came back up. Haley also wanted to go down and look at the waterfall, but she couldn't because the grandfather couldn't climb with her and she couldn't climb down the street. She would never make it. She'd probably get injured and it was a dumb idea. So she couldn't do it. The grandparents were like, sorry, you can't. But Haley was very upset about this. She really wanted to see this waterfall, but unfortunately it wasn't going to happen. So they're like, sorry, you can't. We got to keep walking. Let's go. At this point, Haley starts having a tantrum and she sits down on a rock and she says, I'm not going anywhere unless I go look at this waterfall. And they look back and she's sitting there and they say, all right, we're going to keep walking. Eventually she sits up and realizes, oh, I need to go catch up to them. They are actually leaving me, but they weren't. They were just pretending to, but they went around a corner and they couldn't see her. And they expected her to come around this tree because she was right there, not very far away from them. But she got up, looked around, didn't see them and went down the wrong path. She thought she was going down the right path, but she wasn't. She's running all around, looking for them. They couldn't find her. She couldn't find them. An hour and a half goes by where they're calling out Haley's name and the grandparents still can't find her. So they decide to leave the forest. They call the police and a national search ensues. Haley's mom was at a film festival that day and that's why Haley was with the grandparents. Haley's mom was contacted at the film festival where she left right away and joined the search to find her daughter. They searched for two days for Haley and they didn't find anything in the entire Ozark National Forest. They had canine units with her scent, they had helicopters, they had volunteers. It was the biggest search and rescue operation in Arkansas history. Now based on the person who's missing, based on their age, their knowledge of the area, their personality, the rescue team will create this case as to where they think you would be depending on, well, if you're like this, they'd probably go this way and they can kind of guesstimate where people might be. And it tends to work because that's how people are found with these rescue operations. Now, they were looking in this area and they didn't see her in any of these places. And two local guys who knew these woods very well suggested that she might be in this completely other area miles away. And the rescue team was like, no, that's impossible. She would never be over there. But those two guys were like, we think it'd be good to check over there. And they said, well, sure, go ahead and do it. So they didn't join the search, res the search and rescue team. They went off on their own to this completely different area where they decided they would look for her. Now, these two men's names were William Jeff Valines and Lytle James, and they owned mules. So they took their mules and they rode them into the woods where they assumed she'd be. And soon enough, what do you know, they find a little girl sitting by the water. <laughs> they call out to her and say, are you Haley Zega? And the girl says, yes. <laughs> so there they go. They find the girl. They give her a Diet Coke and a pudding. She eats her food, they stick her on a mule, and they walk her out of the woods, back to civilization, back to her parents. Now this story gets crazy twice. This is where it happens the first time. While in the hospital, 
Haley is questioned by investigators and they're wondering how did she survive in the woods this long and what did she eat? What did she do? It was a miracle that she even made it off the cliff, down to the river, up the river, into the cave where she slept, where she was then rescued. She was just wearing shorts, hadn't eaten anything, and hadn't drank anything. How the heck was she alive? And when she answered them, she said, Oh, Alicia helped me. They asked, who was Alicia? And she said it was a girl that was younger than her, about four years old. And she had long, dark hair, dark eyes, and was wearing a red sweatshirt. Alicia stayed with Haley the whole time. Haley said Alicia appeared to her as soon as she realized she was lost, and she didn't leave her the entire time until she was rescued. She said Alicia knew the forest really well, and she led her down the bluff, off the cliff, to the river. There was only one spot where you could do this, and she found it. That's why everyone was so amazed with this. Like, how did you get off this cliff? Fortunately, Alicia knew how to get down to the river. When they got down to the river, they crossed the river halfway, and they laid on a rock hoping that one of the helicopters up above would see her on the rock. She saw the helicopters, but they didn't see her. That's where she slept, freezing on the rock in the middle of the river. The next morning, they finished crossing the river, went up the river, where they ended up at a cave. And in that cave is where they spent the second night. The two girls walked and talked the whole time through the woods. She said Alicia had a flashlight as well, and that's how she was able to see. In the morning when she woke up from the cave and then got rescued, it had been 52 hours since she went missing. Now this gets a ton of attention. People are surprised this girl made it through the woods for so long with nothing. And on top of it, there was possibly some mysterious girl that no one else could see, that the rescuers didn't see, that kept her alive. It was very intriguing. So Haley went on Dateline, she was on the news, she was in newspapers, she got interviewed all over the place. She was just a six-year-old girl and she was talking so plainly and innocently about her friend who helped her. It was like, it really happened. And Haley at this point had never had an imaginary friend before and never had one again after. It was only during these two days when she was lost that this girl appeared to her and helped her. And one thing she said in an interview that I found interesting was that she felt Haley was appearing to her as she did in order to not scare her. That makes me think, oh, maybe it's like a spirit or something and your brain wouldn't understand what you're seeing. So she presents herself as a kid, which is something she would recognize. She didn't say this at the time when she was younger, but she said later that she always just had a feeling that she was appearing to her like this to protect her, to make her not scared. Now, since this is on the news and everyone everywhere is hearing about it, there were people who heard the story about Alicia and contacted them saying, the girl you're describing sounds like a girl who disappeared 23 years ago, a girl who died in those woods. The girl had died 23 years earlier in 1978 in the very woods Haley was lost. Now, I've done way too much research on this and others who've made videos on this topic have not mentioned all of this information and details on this girl, Alicia, who apparently matches the description of this other girl who went missing 23 years ago. They also said the girl had died on the rock where Haley went to sleep the first night. That's not true. In fact, the truth is much darker. The girl who matches the description of this mysterious girl, Alicia, was named Alana, and her mother was named Goldie Hall. Goldie was 22 years old, and she was in a cult. The cult members were all part of a church named the Church of God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Now the official court trial regarding the death of this girl states that the cult leader was Royal Harris, a 50-year-old man, and he had two sons also in this cult. Goldie's mom was a part of this man's cult, and the cult felt that Alana was an anathema to the cult, meaning that she was detested and hated. She was a three-year-old girl, but apparently the cult hated her. So Royal Harris, the leader of the cult, said that she needed to die. So Royal and his two sons and the mother of the girl took her out into the woods and murdered her. She was shot eight times and had burn marks on her body. She was then stuffed in a bucket and buried two feet under dirt. Royal and his sons were sentenced to 30 years in prison, 1978 to 2008. Why they didn't have a life sentence, I don't know. Now researching farther into these men, I discovered what happened to them after they were released from prison in 2008. They went down to Louisiana where they formed another church in 2009. They did it again. They started another church, probably where they were doing more cult activities. Royal and his son Winston are founding members of the Church of God through the Holy Spirit. Basically the same thing all over again in one state next door. It's horrifying to me that they were able to kill a three-year-old girl and 30 years later, get out and start doing the same thing they were doing before. 
Now where Alana was murdered and buried was not on this rock where everyone on YouTube is saying she was buried. She was buried in the dirt by Cave Mountain, which is only three miles from where Haley first saw Alicia. Both of these events happened in the same section of the woods. These coincidences are incredibly eerie to me. Many people believe that it was a spirit or ghost of Alana helping Haley make it out of the woods. I'm one of those people. There you go, the incredibly fascinating case of Haley Zaga. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos as much as I am enjoying making them. I'm really into this. It's been very fun, very satisfying, and it's nice to have a regular schedule uploading. So if you're liking them, please click the bell so you guaranteed get the notification. And don't forget to subscribe. My livelihood depends on it. Now go watch more great stories. Bye bye.